Bugs. They're everywhere, hiding in the corner of your room, underneath the rocks in your garden, crawling across your kitchen table. No matter where you go, you're bound to find some form of creepy crawly arthropod. But now imagine that they were 10 times bigger. I want to take you back in time to about 330 million years ago to a forest quite different to the one I'm walking through right now. It had a lack of flowering plants and grass and instead had ancient plants and towering trees. Giant club mosses and great horsetails would have covered the ground that I'm standing on, creating the perfect hiding spot for some of the largest terrestrial arthropods of all time. These amazingly oversized bugs lived during the Carboniferous, a time period ranging from 359 to 299 million years ago. During this time, the continents weren't arranged in a way that we would be familiar with today, and so the world looked like a very different place. In the early Carboniferous, the southern hemisphere was dominated by the mega continent of Gondwana while a smaller landmass known as Russia occupied the Northern Hemisphere. The conditions on the planet would also have been very different to what we are used to today. Forests covered large expanses of land, thriving in the tropical and humid climate that had settled over Earth. These ecosystems would have been continuously at work, removing huge volumes of carbon dioxide while they photosynthesized, releasing plentiful amounts of oxygen into the atmosphere. This led to oxygen levels rising dramatically, peaking at around 35%. Average global temperatures were also much warmer at the start of the Carboniferous, as they came up around 20 degrees Celsius. This couldn't be more different to today's conditions. Our current atmosphere only consists of 21% oxygen, and our global temperatures have dropped to a much colder 13.9 degrees. You might be thinking that the Carboniferous would have been a pretty nice place to live, with lots of greenery, nice fresh air and warm temperatures. But remember, these same conditions permitted the evolution and rise of the giant Carboniferous arthropods. During this time, dragonflies as big as seagulls, human-sized millipedes, giant scorpions and monstrous spider-like beasts roam the earth, creating most people's worst nightmare. We're starting off strong with the majestic Meganeura from the late Carboniferous. The colossal ancestor of the modern-day dragonflies with a wingspan reaching up to 70 centimetres. They would have dwarfed their modern-day descendants, with even the largest dragonfly today only having a 13 centimetre wingspan. This made Meganeura one of the largest flying insects of all time. These massive Carboniferous insects were voracious hunters, preying on invertebrates, insects and any small amphibians that were unfortunate enough to cross their path. Their large eyes made it easy for them to spot their next victim, which they would grab hold of using specialised spines on their legs, before tearing them apart using their sharp mouth parts. Next up we have the largest known terrestrial invertebrate of all time from the mid-Carboniferous. The amazing Artropleura, the distant ancestor of the modern day millipede, could reach lengths of nearly 2.5 metres long and could weigh up to 50 kg. Archipleura was an enormously oversized bug who dominated the Carboniferous forest floor and is believed to have had no known predators. No mouthpieces have ever been found, therefore we don't know for sure who or what Archipleura dined on. It's likely that, just like modern day millipedes, Archipleura fed on decaying plant matter that littered the forest floor. However, maybe it did enjoy a carnivorous meal from time to time, feasting on other insects or small vertebrates. Now we must introduce you to our Carboniferous Chelicerates, our eight-legged spider and scorpion-like buddies that will truly make your skin crawl. First up, we have the phenomenal Pulmonoscorpius from the early Carboniferous, which is predicted to have reached a maximum length of 70 centimetres. That makes it one of the largest scorpions to have ever scuttled across the planet. It is impossible to know exactly what Pulmonoscorpius ate, but it definitely would have had a carnivorous diet, perhaps even preying upon some poor unsuspecting early amphibians. But how would it have hunted? In modern scorpions, the relationship between the size of the pincers and the overall body size of the scorpion can be used as an indicator of how toxic their venom is. Larger scorpions tend to have powerful pincers and therefore a less potent venom. You would think the large size of Pulmono scorpius would be a pretty good news then. But don't get too excited just yet, as fossil evidence suggests that its pincers were actually quite small compared to its body size. So maybe it did rely on a powerful venom after all. And finally, last but not least, we present to you the marvellous Margarachne from the late Carboniferous. Now we must be very clear when we say that no, this is not a spider, even though when its fossil was first discovered, it was believed to be a prehistoric arachnid. But no, 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 this 54 cm long beast, with an estimated leg span of 50 cm, was a member of an extinct group of aquatic arthropods, known as the Eurypterids, sometimes referred to as the sea scorpions. However, it's believed that their mergaracne preferred freshwater over marine environments, 
It would have been found raking through the soft sediments of swamps and lakes, capturing and feeding on a range of small aquatic invertebrates. So not only was the forest floor full of terrifying arthropods, but Carboniferous water bodies were also rife with oversized bugs. So why exactly did Carboniferous arthropods get so big? And why since then have they gotten so small? Why now do I no longer have to avoid a Megarachne when I want to go for a swim in the lake? Or try avoid a Meganeuro when I just want to have a picnic? It is very likely that the conditions of the Carboniferous, specifically the elevated oxygen levels, played a very important role in the development of these larger than normal bugs. You see, arthropods don't breathe the same way we do. They have specialised holes, known as spiracles, that cover the surface of their body. Or as is the case here with our friend the millipede, they can be found at the base of his many, many leg pairs. The spiracles are connected by a system of tubes, the tracheal system, that transport gases all throughout their bodies. As they grow, the tubes will need to get longer so that they can reach the central tissues and wider so that they can carry more oxygen. However, studies have found that the tubes grow disproportionately to the rest of their body and will usually take up more space than expected in larger than average arthropods. This means that the total size the arthropod can grow to is limited. But if oxygen conditions in the atmosphere are elevated, then less air needs to be absorbed to meet the arthropod's oxygen demands. This means a much narrower tracheal system and the possibility of growing much, much bigger. But there are many other theories that need to be taken into consideration. It is thought that in some cases the excess amount of oxygen would have been pretty poisonous, especially for aquatic larvae. Higher atmospheric oxygen levels would have resulted in higher amounts of oxygen dissolved in the water. Unlike adult arthropods, the larvae are unable to regulate their gas intake, and so they would have been faced with the toxic effects of too much oxygen. A solution to this problem would have been for these aquatic larvae to grow big, very, very big. By growing larger, they were decreasing their surface area to volume ratio, and therefore were absorbing less oxygen in relation to their body size. So if elevated oxygen levels led to the birth of these massive arthropods, it makes sense that with the relatively lower atmospheric oxygen conditions today, we are left with their much smaller arthropod descendants. While the Carboniferous arthropods are the most impressive example of how giant these multi-legged animals can get, this is not the only time it's happened. Throughout much of life's, and indeed the Earth's geological history, arthropod size appears to have followed oxygen fluctuations quite closely. So does this mean that giant bugs could possibly evolve again in the future? Not exactly. You see, the arthropods follows this fluctuating size trend closely until about 150 million years ago, where we see a spike in oxygen levels, but a decrease in arthropod size. So what happened? Well, first start, birds happened. A decrease in arthropod size coincides with the evolution of birds in the Mesozoic, which quickly became one of the apex predators of the sky. So that's the group you have to thank for keeping the creepy crawlies at a more manageable size. 